thank you for returning. And I just wanted to go over one of my favorite uh, laptops in my collection. And this is the MacBook Air 11 inch from 2012. Currently running Mac OS Catalina. And this is a, a machine. I'm surprised I haven't reviewed it sooner since it is one of my favorite devices. And But the, one of the things that's kind of a shame now is that I don't have a strong use case to continue to use this device, even though it is one of my favorites. Let me just explain. Okay, so I got this, even though it's a 2012 laptop, I, I wasn't using it since 2012. I got this used in 2018 for a specific reason. At that time, I was using uh, my MacBook Pro, 2011 MacBook Pro, and then I had also a 2010 MacBook and a uh, laptop running Windows 10. Those are the main devices I was using at that time. My 2011 MacBook Pro, I actually got that in 2011, and I used that as my main computer for about six years. In early 2017, the uh, hard drive on that uh, laptop failed, and I then got the Windows laptop so I could use that as my main machine until I figured out something to do with that MacBook Pro 2011. I eventually uh, figured out how to fix the, fix the hard drive issue on that MacBook Pro 2011, and I, use, I can still use that today. Um, I actually um, have shown it on the channel previously. Um, but in 2018, I also got a the 2010 MacBook um, just as an additional machine since they both were uh, eligible for High Sierra, uh, Mac OS High Sierra that was released in 2017. Uh, but in 2018, uh, when Apple did their keynote about the future uh, desktop OS, I found out that the 2011 MacBook Pro and the 2010 MacBook would not get Mac OS Mojave. And I really wanted to use that, so I decided to see if it was uh, an inexpensive laptop that I could get that would run Mac OS Mojave. And that's why I purchased this, the MacBook Air 2012. Uh, Mojave uh, supported Mac uh, MacBook Airs from middle 2012 going forward so this is why i got this and um, i got this for about 300 dollars at the time and uh and it's actually been a good price because i'm still using this device three years later although i don't use it as much as i thought i would because what happened is and um, i got this to be basically my main uh device that could run the latest mac os version but later that year i um, went out and got a MacBook Pro, a 2018 MacBook Pro, and that is now still the main uh, device that I'm using. Uh, that 2018 MacBook Pro, um, it runs Big Sur. This 2011 MacBook Air is unable to run uh, Big Sur. It only um, runs up to Catalina, which is what is on right now. Uh, so after I upgraded to the MacBook Pro 2018, I don't really have a reason to use this as my main, this MacBook Air as my main machine anymore. What it would be really good uh, use uh, that I could get out of this would be as a travel machine because the 2011 MacBook Air is very slim, has that 11 inch screen, it has a very small footprint, and you put it in a, a, a bag, a travel bag, and it just doesn't really weigh down the bag much. So this is a really excellent travel computer, or could be, but because of the current situation uh, with COVID, it's just I'm not doing any traveling right now, so I don't really have a use case scenario for this device, which I wish I did, um, but it's still one of my favorite machines. And as you see, this one has the uh, 1.7 gigahertz uh, Intel Core i5 and 4 gigabytes of RAM. So let's look at some additional information about this machine. And to do that, we can go to everymac.com, as I do all the time here. 
And just to give some more information about this particular uh, laptop. And now, I mean, this is right now, it's going on nine years old, but it still holds up fairly well. Now, although I have the four gigabyte of RAM option, max RAM on this device is eight gigabytes. Now, it isn't user upgradable. So you, if you want to get one for eight gigabytes, you have to uh, you have to choose one that has that pre-installed because you're not going to be able to upgrade that later on. And also, let's see here. You can also get. I have the one with the i5. Where is that here for the processor? I think I just over sc uh, scrolled right past it. Let me see here. Here we go. Right up here. So yeah, I have the Core i5. Uh, but I, there is the option of getting a, an i7. So, I mean, you could get this as uh, powerful as you need, uh, but it will cost you extra. Uh, I paid $300 for this three years ago. I wouldn't be surprised that even if, with the same configuration, it was going to cost you $300 or more now. Uh, and also, that I have the 64 gigabyte internal storage model but there is one that 128 gigabytes this is one of the few things that is user user upgradable uh, so i could if i wanted to open this device up and switch out into a, a, a solid state drive of my own purchase um, to make it even more than 128 gigabytes i could put something much larger in here so although this is um kind of um Factory, some aspects of this is factory sealed and not user upgradable, but the hard drive is one of the few things that you can upgrade. And like a, a guy like iFixit, or even I think there's even videos on YouTube showing uh, people upgrading this model uh, internal uh, solid state drive. Um, but you know, all those things will add on to the price of this, you know. Um, and would you want to get this at to, at uh, at any price today? Is this a still a great computer? I would say yes um, for most people. Maybe not for a power user, but I think um, if you're someone like me, I don't I don't really consider myself a power user. I consider myself a consistent user, if that makes any sense. So I'm I'm always using my devices, especially my main laptops. And I'm on them all day, um, so I'm constantly using them. Um, but it's more, what's more important to me than power is compatibility. So the ability to use a device that's compatible with current services, and this is still supported. Uh, Mac OS Catalina was uh, released in 2019, and Apple right now tends to support their operating systems, their desktop operating systems for three years. So that means until 2022, this will still get security patches from Apple. Uh, so I suspect uh, up to maybe September or November 2022, so that's like a year and a half based on the current date of support that I'll still get for this device directly from Apple. But there is something on horizon that kind of complicates things. This is an Intel device here, has the Intel processor. And... The issue here is the M1 Max. So you could get an M1 MacBook Air for around a thousand dollars. I mean, that's a that's a steal. So this is the future right now. And how much should you invest in an Intel Mac right now? I suspect in the next couple of years. Um, well, one thing, I think by 2023, Apple is going to support or going to release uh, the next version of their uh, desktop OS. And I think by that time, it's going to be M1 Mac only. Uh, so the clock is ticking on Intel Macs. Uh, if you can get one at a very attractive price, then it's, it's perfectly fine. I mean, it will still be compatible with most services, uh, at least going forward, hopefully. I'm just looking at, really, I'm using it as a model 
when Apple uh, went from PowerPC to Intel, um, that transformation took about three years. And with the uh, first M1 Mac being released in 2020, uh, that three years will be up in 2023. So if it's going to follow that same pattern, by that time, basically everything as far as services going forward are going to be M1 Mac only. So that's what I suspect. Uh, but as of right now, as is one of the, I'm on Apple's website right now, and I tend to use Apple's website as one of the sites that I use for testing of machines. And of course, everything runs just fine here. All services uh, run fine. Streaming services, um, like all the major streaming services, would just be fine. I can't really demo with them right now. Uh, but I can demo my channel. Welcome back to Digital Laundry. Me, Sister LJ, and I will be returning to Venice Falling. And as you see, uh, just using YouTube, which is one of the simplest examples you can shoot, you can show for streaming. Uh, everything is just fine with this, even with just the four gigabytes of RAM. I mean, my current MacBook Pro has 16 gigabytes of RAM, four times what it has on here and being a younger machine but this i mean basically all the different uh web sur web uh surfing that i do or all the services i take part in on the internet that i use this can handle it just fine um even though it is very underpowered for today but for basic uh usage case uh this is just a fine device so yeah if you can get this at a cheap price um I think it's it's worth it, but if you cannot, and it, it starts the price starts to go very high, I think it's going looking at the M1 Mac at a thousand dollars makes more sense. Uh, but yeah, this is still a great machine, and if conditions change um, in the world and people start to travel more safely, I could see myself using this. Um, as my exclusive travel machine. Um, I think that's the excellent uh, use case for this and I really look forward to things getting better and improving so that we can get back to normal and I can maybe take advantage of a device such as this. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show uh, my MacBook Pro 2012 or excuse me, MacBook Air 2012. Forgot what device I'm reviewing here. And thank you for watching. This is Digital Wandering signing off.